Good afternoon and welcome to another Moment with Madison. James Madison, 4th President of the United States. The essence of government is power. And power's twin sister, whose name is money. All of legislation is about power and money, taking it from one group and giving it to another. If you don't know who is getting the power and the money, well, it's not you. The only important question about a society, of course, is who has the power and the money? But in 1776, we were got to ask a different question. We got to ask the question, who should have the power and the money? And Jefferson and I thought that the common man should have a lot more power and money. That the role of the government is to protect him from the rapaciousness of the rich and powerful. By contrast, Hamilton and, to some extent, George Washington were more concerned about doing what was best for those at the top of society. As Jefferson and I saw, the blessings of democracy could best be experienced by country populated with men of property. Men who have a commitment to the long-term well-being of the country. A man without property is always subject to the whims of his employer and is not a complete citizen. It's far too easy to sway his opinion and his vote. Thus it was evident to us that only an agrarian society would suffice. Consider, a farmer owns his farm. If there is a downturn in the economy, he will have to give up buying things from Europe, but he will survive reasonably well, eating what he grows and wearing what his wife can spin and sew for him. By contrast, a factory worker owns nothing. He may not even own his own dwelling. He may be thrown out of employment at a moment's notice and be unable to find parallel employment. He, who is a hardworking, capable, and dedicated workman, might find himself living on the streets through no fault of his own. Hence, agriculture. Let's leave the manufacturers to Europe. It has been noted by your pundits that Washington, Jefferson, and I were all plantation owners having hundreds of slaves working for us. During my lifetime, I did not comment on this incongruity. It is interesting, however, to consider that if, if we had been successful in abolishing slavery in 1787, and we certainly put Herculean effort towards doing so, if we had abolished slavery, Washington Jefferson and I all would have lost an enormous amount of money. And I look forward to seeing you again in another Moment with Madison.